Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Glad you could attend. Come inside today, my movie maniacs, as we take a look at Kick-Ass 2. Yes, the sequel to the comic book film of 2010 that uh, brought some brutality to the comic book genre. Now, this time around, we're following the story. Uh, it's a couple of years after the events of the first one, and we see that Kick-Ass is just trying to survive high school rather than be a superhero anymore. But the culture has been affected by Kick-Ass's presence, and now we have a group of superheroes, of folks donning the cape and mask and going to fight crime. So many, in fact, they've grouped together, and led by Colonel Stars and Stripes, this superhero group goes out and does community service as well as protect the neighborhood. Meanwhile, we've got Hit Girl, who's been protecting the neighborhood all along, and she is finding herself with an even evil and more painful challenge of high school. She prefers fighting in the city streets than dealing with the pain and embarrassment that comes along with being a teenager in high school. Red Mist is back only this time in the form of Motherfucker. He's been scarred by the events of the first film and he's turned evil and has gathered a large group of supervillains to go after Kick-Ass and get his revenge for what had happened at the first film. Folks, Kick-Ass 2 was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this immensely. I'm trying to figure out where all the harsh criticism is coming from because what did they really expect? I mean, first off, the scenes are exactly what you come to expect from Kick-Ass. Uh, from the first movie. They're brutal, they're heavy, and they're violent, okay? And there are also some creative ways for people to get killed. I really enjoyed the fight scenes and how they were choreographed. Now, I think they could have been shot just a little bit better. I think uh, uh, Jeff Wadlow, who hasn't done many films, he's done one or two uh, films before, an action film, kind of a fight film, but I think they could have been directed just a little better, but on the whole, really enjoyed the fight scenes, the way they were choreographed, very kinetic and fluid, and a lot of fun to watch, especially some of the ways that the supervillains off the, the good guys, okay? Uh, and then you get a lot more meat. You get a lot more exploration in the Hit Girl character, which I love. In fact, this whole movie could have been just about Hit Girl, and I would have loved that bit, because Chloe Grace Mortz is fantastic in this. In fact, out of everybody in this, she's the one really exercising some acting chops in this, and and I really loved what she's done with Kit Girl. Portraying that growth of character across the screen really comes across, and she did really well on that. So props there. Aaron Taylor Johnson is back at Dave, and we do get some growth with Dave. Uh, debating, you know, playing, uh, uh, you know, kick-ass, debating on whether or not he is kick-ass or if he is Dave, and kind of that question of duality of who you really are, which is an interesting question in a superhero genre, which I think uh, needs to be addressed more, is are you the mask, or are you your own person just wearing the mask. So there's a great little depth in questions in there. Uh, Christopher Mintz Plaza, he's back as uh, Christopher D'Amico, uh, uh, a.k.a. Red Mist, a.k.a. Motherfucker. Loved him. Very hilarious. Loved the Motherfucker character. He's a guy who recognizes where his actual strength is and uses that to the best of his ability. A lot of fun to watch on screen, but I tell you, Colonel Stars and Stripes, played by Jim Carrey, really steals the scene, whichever scene he's in. I loved his character in this and he just stole the show whenever he was on. Uh, definitely a slightly different character than what we've seen from Jim Carrey, and I like that. I like seeing actors uh, get out of roles that we normally see them in, and he definitely has that in Colonel Stars and Stripes, a very memorable character. In fact, uh, about the only thing I really had an issue with this, a couple of them was, uh, one is there was almost too many characters, okay? I know they were kind of going for that. It's kind of a bit of a, a parody of the superhero genre and how many, you know, especially the movies uh, where you get so many characters in there, but they made such interesting characters, uh, that I, the sub-characters and sub supporting characters, that I really would love to see exploration on these characters as well and some more depth. So the fact that you had so many characters and couldn't really focus on them so much, uh, I kind of felt a little left out there. I really wanted to see more, know, more about these characters. And also, I think just a little bit this film doesn't quite have the edge that the first one did. Now, yes, it is brutal, it is a rated R, and they do take advantage of that fact. Thank you, rated R rating. But I do think the feeling of this one versus the first one, uh, just a little less edgy, a little bit more comic booky, not quite as dark and gritty as the first one, not quite as brutal as the first one, I think. Though people are saying that, I'm not sure where they're getting it, because I remember the first one. This one, it just felt just a little bit for lack of a better term, lighter than the first one. I think they could have gone dark places with Kick-Ass 2 and they kind of didn't go as far as you would like to see as it feels like you want to go with these characters. Didn't quite get that dark. 
but still an ac enjoyable action film, great superhero film. Love to see a more mature comic book film out there, and Kick-Ass 2 is definitely that. Four and a half stubs for me on this. Not quite as edgy for me as the first one, but I loved Hit Girl. She really steals the show along with Colonel Stars and Stripes, and this movie will definitely uh, be enjoyable if you enjoy uh, more mature uh, action movies. Definitely uh, check this out at the theater. See it uh, either at a matinee or, or full price. It'll be worth. You won't feel like you've wasted your money, and you can tell this franchise is still kicking ass. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Until next time, keep that ticket stuff.